The Song of Hiawatha, 16, Peupuk Kiwis, by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, read by Frank Blissett. You shall hear how Peupuk Kiwis, he the handsome Yenadizzi, whom the people called the Storm Fool, vexed the village with disturbance. You shall hear of all his mischief, and his flight from Hiawatha, and his wondrous transmigrations, and the end of his adventures. On the shores of Gitchigumi, on the dunes of Negawaju, by the shining big sea water, stood the lodge of Peopakkiwis. It was he who in his frenzy whirled these drifting sands together on the dunes of Negawaju, when among the guests assembled he so merrily and madly danced at Hiawatha's wedding, danced the beggar's dance to please them. Now in search of new adventures, from his lodge went Peupakkiwis, came with speed into the village, found the young men all assembled in the lodge of old Aegu, listening to his monstrous stories, to his wonderful adventures. He was telling them the story of Ojig, the summer maker, how he made a hole in heaven, how he climbed up into heaven, and let out the summer weather, the perpetual pleasant summer. How the otter first essayed it, how the beaver, lynx, and badger tried in turn the great achievement, from the summit of the mountain smote their fists against the heavens, smote against the sky their foreheads, cracked the sky but could not break it. How the wolverine, uprising, made him ready for the encounter, bent his knees down like a squirrel, drew his arms back like a cricket. Once he leaped, said old Aegu, once he leaped, and lo, above him bent the sky as ice in rivers when the waters rise beneath it. Twice he leaped, and lo, above him cracked the sky as ice in rivers when the freshet is at highest. Thrice he leaped, and lo, above him, broke the shattered sky asunder, and he disappeared within it, and Ojig, the fisher weasel, with a bound went in behind him. Hark you, shouted Peopak Kiwis, as he entered at the doorway. I am tired of all this talking, tired of old Aegu's stories, tired of Hiawatha's wisdom. Here is something to amuse you better than this endless talking. Then from out his pouch of wolfskin forth he drew with solemn manner all the game of bowl and counters, pogassing with thirteen pieces. White on one side were they painted, and vermilion on the other. Two kennebeeks, or great serpents, two ininiwag, or wedgemen, one great war-club, pogamagun, and one slender fish, the kigo. Four round pieces, ozawabeeks, and three shishabwag, or ducklings. All were made of bone and painted, all except the oswabeeks. These were brass, on one side burnished, and were black upon the other. In a wooden bowl he placed them, shook and jostled them together, 
threw them on the ground before him, thus exclaiming and explaining, Red side up are all the pieces, and one great kennebeek standing on the bright side of a brass piece, on a burnished Ozawa beak. Thirteen tens and eight are counted. Then again he shook the pieces, shook and jostled them together, threw them on the ground before him, still exclaiming and explaining. White are both the great Kennebeeks, white the Ininiwug, the Wedgemen, red are all the other pieces, five tens and an eight are counted. Thus he taught the game of hazard, thus displayed it and explained it, running through its various chances, various changes, various meanings, Twenty curious eyes stared at him, full of eagerness stared at him. Many games, said old Aegu, many games of skill and hazard have I seen in different nations, have I played in different countries. He who plays with old Aegu must have very nimble fingers. Though you think yourself so skillful, I can beat you, Peopuk Kiwis. I can even give you lessons in your game of bowl and counters. So they sat and played together. All the old men and the young men played for dresses, weapons, wampum, played till midnight, played till morning, Played until the Yenna Dizzy, till the cunning Peopuk Kiwis of their treasures had despoiled them, of the best of all their dresses, shirts of deerskin, robes of ermine, belts of wampum, crests of feathers, warlike weapons, pipes and pouches. Twenty eyes glared wildly at him, like the eyes of wolves glared at him. Said the lucky Peupuk Kiwis, In my wigwam I am lonely. In my wanderings and adventures I have need of a companion. Fain would have a Meshinawa, an attendant and pipe-bearer. I will venture all these winnings, all these garments heaped about me, all this wampum, all these feathers, on a single throw will venture, all against the young man yonder. T'was a youth of sixteen summers, t'was a nephew of Iegu, face in a mist, the people called him. As the fire burns in a pipe-head, dusky red beneath the ashes, so beneath his shaggy eyebrows glowed the eyes of old Iegu. Ugh! he answered very fiercely. Ugh! they answered all and each one. Seized the wooden bowl of the old man, Closely in his bony fingers clutched the fatal bowl, Anagon, shook it fiercely and with fury, made the pieces ring together as he threw them down before him. Red were both the great Kennebeeks, red the Ininiwug, the Wedgemen, red the Shishibwug, the Ducklings, Black the four brass Ozawa beaks, white alone the fish, the kigo, only five the pieces counted. Then the smiling Peopuk Kiwis shook the bowl and threw the pieces, lightly in the air he tossed them, and they fell about him scattered, dark and bright the Ozawa beaks. Red and white the other pieces, and upright among the others, one in an awog was standing. 
even as crafty Peopokkiwis stood alone among the players, saying, Five tens, mine the game is. Twenty eyes glared at him fiercely, like the eyes of wolves glared at him, as he turned and left the wigwam, followed by his Meshinawa, by the nephew of Iegu, by the tall and graceful stripling, bearing in his arms the winnings, shirts of deerskin, robes of vermin, belts of wampum, pipes and weapons. Carry them, said Peupuk Kiwis, pointing with his fan of feathers, to my wigwam far to eastward, on the dunes of Nagawaju. Hot and red with smoke and gambling were the eyes of Peopuk Kiwis as he came forth to the freshness of the pleasant summer morning. All the birds were singing gaily, all the streamlets flowing swiftly, and the heart of Peopuk Kiwis sang with pleasure as the birds sang, beat with triumph like the streamlets as he wandered through the village in the early gray of morning, with his fan of turkey feathers, with his plumes and tufts of swans down, till he reached the farthest wigwam, reached the lodge of Hiawatha. Silent was it and deserted. No one met him at the doorway. No one came to bid him welcome. But the birds were singing round it, in and out and round the doorway, hopping, singing, fluttering, feeding, and aloft upon the ridge pole, Kagagi, the king of ravens, sat with fiery eyes and screaming, flapped his wings at Peopokkiwis. All are gone, the lodge is empty. Thus it was spake Peopuk Kiwis, in his heart resolving mischief. Gone is weary Hiawatha, gone the silly laughing water, gone Nokomis the old woman, and the lodge is left unguarded. By the neck he seized the raven, whirled it round him like a rattle, like a medicine pouch he shook it, strangled Kagagi, the raven, from the ridge pole of the wigwam, left its lifeless body hanging as an insult to its master, as a taunt to Hiawatha. With a stealthy step he entered round the lodge in wild disorder, threw the household things about him, piled together in confusion, bowls of wood and earthen kettles, robes of buffalo and beaver, skins of otter, lynx, and ermine, as an insult to Nokomis, as a taunt to Minnehaha. Then departed Peopuk Kiwis, whistling, singing through the forest, whistling gaily to the squirrels, who from hollow boughs above him dropped their acorn shells upon him, singing gaily to the wood birds, who from out the leafy darkness answered with a song as merry. Then he climbed the rocky headlands, looking o'er the gitchy goomy, perched himself upon their summit, waiting full of mirth and mischief the return of Hiawatha. Stretched upon his back he lay there, far below him plashed the waters, plashed and washed the dreamy waters. Far above him swam the heavens, swam the dizzy, dreamy heavens. Round him hovered, fluttered, rustled Hiawatha's mountain chickens, flockwise swept and wheeled about him, almost brushed him with their pinions. And he killed them as he lay there, slaughtered them by tens and twenties, 
through their bodies down the headland, through them on the beach below him, till at length Kaoshk, the seagull, perched upon a crag above them, shouted, It is Peopak Kiwis! He is slaying us by hundreds! Send a message to our brother! Tidings send to Hiawatha! That was The Song of Hiawatha, 16, Peupuk Kiwis, by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, read by Frank Blissett.